thought this was a great video, and it's definitely struck a chord with me for what are probably fairly self-evident reasons. But it was actually Cave Journey's comment on the video that prompted me to respond. Um, the comment was, I've been physically beaten up many times for being a homo, and stand up to them. Hard to do when you're being held down and kicked, literally as well as figuratively. Well, in answer to that, I can say, yeah, me too. Um, my childhood was pretty grim at school, because I was considered a um, bum boy by all the other kids. And back in the mid-1970s, teachers would do pretty much nothing to stop this kind of bullying. I think that bullying was probably seen as part of natural childhood behaviour. And homophobic bullying was almost viewed as something that would help you become a man and stop you being such a sissy. And if I complained, I was always left with the impression that the bullying was really my fault for being such a big fairy and that I should toughen up. So toughen up I did, um, probably much more and much earlier than I should have done as a child. So my fuck you, I don't care teenage attitude wasn't all for show. Most of the time I really did mean it. And even so, it wasn't actually that easy. Um, so I'm not surprised that so many young gay people contemplate or attempt suicide. I think I was very fortunate in that I had understanding parents who were quite happy for me to be myself. But even so, they were pretty overtly and even casually homophobic until I eventually came out to them. And when you're a gay kid, the rejection and the condemnation happen so early in life that you haven't really had time to build up any kind of defences. And I think a great many gay people bear the scars of this for the rest of their lives. And if it sounds very dramatic to talk about bearing the scars, I think that it should, because it was pretty fucking dramatic on occasions. I can remember being verbally abused and physically beaten by other kids. And even now, you know, well over a quarter of a century later, it still makes me sad and angry to think that I had to endure that. And this brings me on to this whole ex-gay idea. The majority of out gay people have overcome considerable obstacles to be themselves, to reach the point that they find themselves right now. Um, many of us have had to deal not only with the rejection of other people, but our own rejection of ourselves. Um, and that's something that Jokup and his ilk will never understand. Um, for starters, they're supremely confident in the belief that they are right. But also, they never have to put any effort into anything, because all they have to do to fix anything is just pray to their God, and their God will sort it out for them. So, to have one of these dimwits tell me that I should deny who I am and turn to Jesus is something I find really insulting. Um, the assumption that I, or anyone else who's gay, would be interested in pickling our brains in first century superstition so that we can live our lives the way that these idiots think that we should, I think it's simultaneously breathtakingly arrogant and monumentally stupid. I'm not a Christian, and I never have been a Christian, and I don't want to be one. So, if a born-again Christian wants to ignore the supposed teachings of the person that their religion is named after, um, and pass judgment on me, if they want to judge me to be a sinner, then I'm probably going to do a bit of judging of my own. Uh, because in my eyes, the judgment of people who believe in virgin births and crucified men coming back to life is not exactly rock solid. So, what I propose is that we do what they only talk about. Let's be kind and compassionate and socially responsible and generous. Let's not judge other people by what we consider are their failings. Let's try to forgive people who hurt us. Let's try to tolerate people that we disagree with. And let's try to find love wherever we can. <laughs>